today. Speak to us today, God. Hear our cry today. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Spirit of God, speak again. Speak, oh God, not only to challenge us. Speak to bring change. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, amen. Praise God. Before I get into the word, I want to... Thank you, Jesus. This, we thank God on the, on the third Sunday, on the third Sunday of September. Um, can somebody just quickly tell me what date that was? The third Sunday? The 15th. The 15th. No, no. No, 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 no. The third Sunday of September. All right. All right. So whatever the date was. Yes. The third Sunday of September marked one year since our family has been here. One year. To God be the glory. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. And we celebrate his goodness. We celebrate his goodness. One of the things I love about God is that God, God always has his people on the move. God is a God of progress. But he's a God of process. We can't get there overnight. We're not going to get there overnight. If you get there overnight, you will never appreciate when you get there. Your journey is important. Your journey because along the way you're learning lessons. Along the way, along the way you're developing appreciation for what God has already done. What God is doing. And you're developing faith and expectation for what God has in store. Appreciate the journey. And of course you know that a lot of times... We become discouraged because we are comparing ourselves with other people. And we are not realizing that they had their own journey. In fact, they are on their own journey. It's just that they are probably farther along on their journey. But thank God, you and I can say today, look what the Lord has done. Thank you, Jesus. We need to put our hands together for Jesus. God has been good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And we give the Lord, we give the Lord thanks. We have been on this journey in Psalm 23. My wife keeps saying to me, how oh, you see so much things in it? Psalm 23, we are at 4, and I call it 4C, because in 4A, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then we looked at 4B, to be thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Last week, we were only able to look at thy rod. Today, we want to talk about thy staff. Yes. So last week, we examined the rod. And we said, the shepherd goes into the bush and selects a young sapling which is dug from the ground. This is carved and whittled down with great care and patience. The enlarged base of the sapling where its trunk joins the roots is shaped into a smooth, rounded head of hardwood. After he completes it, the shepherd boy spends hours 
practicing with his club, learning how to throw it with amazing speed and accuracy. It becomes his main weapon of defense for both himself and his sheep. We said the rod was relied on to safeguard both himself and his flock in danger. And it was furthermore the instrument he used to discipline and correct any wayward sheep that insisted on wandering away. The last time we were together, we examined four things about the rod. The first thing we examined was that the sheep asserts that the shepherd's rod, his weapon of power, authority, and defense is a continuous comfort to him. And we said the last time, spiritually speaking, the word of God, the rod, spiritually speaking, is the word of God. It carries with it the convicting power an irrefutable impact of thus saith the Lord. The second thing we examined about the rod last time was that the rod is used by the shepherd for the discipline of the sheep. If the shepherd saw sheep wandering away on its own or approaching poisonous weeds or getting too close to danger of one sort or another, the club would go whistling through the air to send the wayward animals scurrying back to the bunch. Spiritually speaking, we said it, this book will keep you from sin. It is the word of God that comes swiftly to our hearts, that comes with surprising suddenness to correct and reprove us when we go astray. It's amazing. How studying scripture, reading scripture, when you, when you are in a certain place, going through a certain experience, how the Holy Spirit, Spirit brings back an appropriate word to your mind at that moment to, to, to either encourage you or correct you, the rod. The third thing we looked at was that the rod in the shepherd's hand was used to examine and count the sheep. We, exa we, we, we examined the fact that because of the sheep's long wool, it is not always easy to detect disease, wounds or defects in the sheep. So the, 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 the shepherd uses the rod. Search me, O God. The word says, and know my heart. Psalm 139, 23 to 24. I know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Spiritually speaking, we said, if we will allow it, if we will submit ourselves to it, God, by his word, will search us. He will get below the surface, behind the front of our old self-life, and expose things that need to be made right. I want to challenge us, brothers and sisters, as we go through the week, to always be praying and asking God for a word for your heart. Once church is finished, I start to pray for a word. And I want to challenge all of us to join me always in praying for a word from God. We don't want to get into any comfort zone. We don't want to ever get to a place where things become ordinary and regular. We want always to live in anticipation for what God has to say. Because none of us should, should have a desire to remain where we have been. The fourth thing we said about the rod was that the shepherd's rod is an instrument of protection for both himself and the sheep when they are in danger. And remember what we said when we closed last time. 
Christ, when he was tempted in the wilderness, used the rod, the word of God. The three temptations that Satan brought to him, on each count he told Satan, it is written, the word of God says. And you and I, if we are going to overcome the enemy, we'll have to use the word, the rod. This week, we will examine thy staff. And having spoken about the rod, we can say thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Brothers and sisters, in the Middle East, the shepherd carries only a rod and a staff. The staff, more than any other item, identifies the shepherd as a shepherd. The shepherd's staff is normally a long slender stick. Often with a crook or hook on one end. It is selected with care by the owner. It is designed, shaped and adapted. Especially to the needs of the sheep. Brothers and sisters. Just as the rod of God is emblematic of the word of God. So the staff of God is sim symbolic of the spirit of God. So when we talk about the rod, it represents the word of God. When we talk about the staff, it represents the spirit of God. There are three areas of sheep management in which the staff plays a most significant role. Let's examine those three areas quickly. Firstly, the first is the drawing of the sheep together into an intimate relationship. The drawing of the sheep. So the shepherd uses the staff to draw the sheep closer to himself. God Almighty through the Holy Spirit draws you and I closer, closer to himself. Come now, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit draws you closer, draws me closer. The anointing of the Holy Spirit inspires you and inspires me to get closer. Oh, mighty God, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with me and fill me with your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The shepherd will use his staff to gently lift a newborn lamb and bring it to its mother if they become separated. He does this because he does not wish to have the yo reject her offspring if it bears the odor of his hands upon it. The staff is used by the shepherd to reach out and catch individual sheep, young or old, and draw them close to himself for intimate examination. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you and I must want the Holy Spirit to be at work in our hearts, in our lives, in our church, in our family. The Holy Spirit is here to draw us closer. Glory to God. The staff is very useful in this way for the shy and timid sheep that normally tend to keep at a distance from the shepherd. In the Christian life, we find the gracious Holy Spirit, the comforter. Drawing folks together into a warm personal fellowship with one another. It is also he who draws us to Christ. In Revelation twenty-two seventeen, the Bible says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come! And let him that heareth say, Come! And let him that is a thirst, Come! And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. 
But in John 6, 44, the Bible says, No man can come to me, Jesus says, except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. The word draw means to drag, to draw, to pull, or to persuade. The Holy Spirit. Every church needs the Holy Spirit to be active. So the Holy Spirit can persuade men to come. Mighty God. When we encourage them. And them not taking no talk from we. The Holy Spirit will persuade them. The Holy Spirit will draw them. And some of them he has to drag them. Pull them out of the enemy's camp and out of the enemy's hand. Let's pray that the Holy Spirit will be at work in our hearts. Work in our church. Work in our lives. Mighty God. Can you right where you are says Holy Spirit work in me. Come on man brothers and sisters. Let us, let us talk to him. Holy Spirit work in me. Let us ask him to work in our church. Holy Spirit, work in our church. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Let him draw us closer. Some of us tend to drift. Holy Spirit. Every man drifting. Every woman drifting. Oh God, pull us back. Pull us back, Holy Ghost. Pull us back. Everybody out of line. Get us back in line, Holy Ghost. Those who are on a solo trip, draw them back, Holy Ghost. Those who are, who are staying by themselves, pull them in, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The second area we want to examine quickly is the guiding of the sheep. The shepherd uses staff to guide his sheep gently into a new path or through some gate or along dangerous, difficult, difficult roads. The shepherd does not use the staff to beat the sheep. Rather, the tip of the long slender stick is laid gently against the animal's side and the pressure applied guides the sheep in the way the owner wants it to go. Thus, the sheep is reassured of its proper path. Jesus said in John 16 verse 13, How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Brothers and sisters, it is the Holy Spirit who comes and makes the life of Christ real, personal, and intimate to us. It is the Holy Spirit who gently, persistently says to us, this is the way, walk in it. It is the Holy Spirit who, when you and I are reading scripture, who makes it come alive. Who in our devotional time, allow the devotion to be to, be, to come alive and awaken our spirits and strengthen us and inspires us. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit when we tend to be getting off course. The Holy Spirit comes and nudges us gently to get back on, on track. For the true child of God there is that intimate, subtle, yet magnificent experience of sensing the comfort at his side. There is a calm, quiet repose in the knowledge that he is there to direct even the most minute details of daily living. I challenge you 
when you are faced with decisions, whether they are difficult or simple, challenging, regular, whatever, I want to encourage you and encourage myself to invite the Holy Spirit to come and help us with our decision making. One of my aunts told me, she says, she was going through a difficult period. And one day when the burden came down heavy and she wasn't sure what to do, she sat on the side of her bed and she said, Jesus, come sit down right here, son. Let me talk to you right here, son. You and I have to get to that place where we say, Holy Spirit, I can't make it on my own. I don't know what to do, Holy Spirit. Sit down right here, sir. Oh, sit down right here, sir, beside me and tell me what to do. Keep your hand on me, Jesus. Keep your hand on me, God Almighty. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. The songwriter says there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God. A place where we are Savior meet near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release Near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace. Near to the heart of God. Oh Jesus. Blessed Redeemer. Sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee. Near to the heart of God. Church is not going through the motions. Church is about relationship with God. Mighty God, help us, help us, Jesus. Oh, God, help us, help us. Church is about relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What would you and I do without the tender touch of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Our lives would be mundane, boring. But thank God for the fresh anointing sweet sweet anointing pouring out to make me clean like a mighty rushing stream can, can we can we just sing that can, can we just sing that verse Sweet, sweet anointing. Sweet anointing. Can we just stand? Can we just change our position and let us sing? Pouring out to, to make me clean, like a mighty rushing stream. Oh, your sweet. more time. Come on, everybody, everywhere. Oh, your sweet, sweet, hallelujah, sweet anointing, pouring out to make me clean, pouring out to make me clean, like a mighty rushing like stream.
Can we can we take a little time and worship God? Lord, we praise you today. We honor you today. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for convicting us of our sins and drawing us into the family of the living God. Holy Spirit, thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your presence with us. Holy Spirit, thank you for leading and guiding and inspiring, for empowering and using us, oh God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Without you, Holy Spirit, life would have been empty. Life would have been mundane. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do what you want to do, Holy Spirit, among us. Anoint us, empower us, use us for your glory and your honor, Holy Ghost. Have your way, 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 Holy Ghost. Fresh anointing upon us, Jesus. Fresh anointing. Hallelujah. You may be seated, please. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The third thing I want us to look at, the third function of the staff is to free the sheep from entanglement. One of the places to find the sheep stuck is in the labyrinths of wild roses or brambles. Excuse me, where they've pushed in to find a few stray mouthfuls of green grass. Soon thorns were so hooked in their wool they could not possibly pull free. Tug as they might. Only the use of a staff could free them from their entanglement. Likewise, with us, many of our jams and challenges are of our own making. In stubborn self-willed self-assertion, we keep pushing ourselves into situations we cannot get out of. Then with tenderness, compassion, and care, our shepherd comes to us. He draws near and in tenderness lifts us by his spirit out of the dilemma. I want to talk to somebody today who is broken hearted. I want to talk to somebody today who is sad. And it is as a result of choices you've made, decisions you have made. You may have been told not to do, not to go, not to engage, but you still went ahead. And today the consequences are bearing down on you. But I want to say to you, and probably you have been trying to get out of it, get around it, get away from it. And the more you try, is the more hooked you are. The more caught you are. The more entangled you become. I want to say to you today that he has not written you off. The shepherd has not written you off. The shepherd has not forgotten about you. But the shepherd, through the use of his staff, the work of the Holy Spirit, he wants to de-entangle you. Hallelujah. God wants to de-entangle you, unravel you, Mighty God, let the Holy Ghost have his way in your heart and in your life. Listen to this verse as I close. John 14, verse 16. Jesus says, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. 
The word comforter comes from the Greek word parakletos, which means called to one's aid. The Holy Spirit has been called to aid you, to help you, to assist you, to stand by you. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. Don't give up. Help is on the way. Somebody turn to somebody beside you and tell them help is on the way. God Almighty. Your family may have given up on you. Your friends may have given up on you. But help is on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The comforter, Paracletus, speaks of an advocate, an intercessor, a consoler, comforter, helper. He has come to help you. The Holy Ghost has come to help you. Surrender yourself to him. Submit yourself to his authority. Paracletus. Para means from close beside. Kalio means make a call. Properly, a legal advocate who makes the right judgment call because close enough to the situation. So the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost to get into your space. Get into your situation. Let him get close into your situation so he knows what it is. So he can make the right judgment call. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Right where you are. Right where you are. In the midst of your brokenness. In the midst of your dilemma. In the midst of your sorrow. Tell the Holy Spirit. Tell the Holy Spirit. I need your help. I need your help. I can't do it on my own. I talk to other people. And I get deeper. I try other situations. And I still get deeper. I still more lonely. I still more empty. I still more sad. But today, Holy Spirit, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to come to my aid. Thank you, my helper. You have come to help me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are. But I've come to tell you that the Holy Spirit has been sent to help you. I've come to tell you, help. Is on the way. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. Mighty God. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. I feel like somebody who is at a place. Who is at a place. Is at, at a place that needs a special intervention. Just need to stand right where you are. Whether you are in the auditorium. Or you are at home. Watching online or listening on the radio. I want to invite you to stand and just raise your hand in surrender. Because help has come. The Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit, God Almighty has sent the Holy Spirit to help you in your dilemma. The helper has come. You stand where you are. I know I'm not talking to everybody. I'm not talking to everybody in this regard. But if you have heard him, God has sent help for you. And the breakthrough is today. Mighty God of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody who... Who, who wants that breakthrough today? Following the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's your day. Thank you, Jesus. The helper has been sent to help you. If we could help you, we would have helped you. We can't help you, but the Holy Ghost can help you. Lord God, if others could help you, they would have helped you. They can't help you. They need help themselves. 
And so when they talk about you, when they say things about you, it's because they can't help you. They are frustrated themselves. But thank you, Jesus. Help is on its way. Mighty God, thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God, thank you, Jesus. Mm, there's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough anointing in this place. Hey, God Almighty, there's a breakthrough anointing. There's a breakthrough anointing. We're tearing down strongholds. We tear down strongholds. We tear down strongholds. Strongholds in thoughts. Hey, we come against imagination. Every imagination that exalted itself against God. We tear down strongholds. We pull down strongholds today. In the name of Jesus. Strongholds out of our lives. Strongholds out of our families. Strongholds out of our church. Strongholds out of our neighbor, neighborhood. In the name of Jesus. Hey, the helper has been sent to help us. We're not carrying it by ourselves. We're not throwing up our hands in the air. And so we can't bother. The helper has been sent to help us. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those who are at, those who are watching online, if, if, if the Spirit of God has spoken to you and you sense that today is your day, if you have your olive oil there with you, tip a little because I'm going to those standing here, I'm going to anoint them, but you just anoint yourself because I'm going to pray. There's a breakthrough anointing in this place. Spirit of the living God. Hey, Holy Ghost, you have been sent to help us. And the help we are receiving it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Christ shall break every fetter and set you free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Break every stronghold. Can, can the, well, the choir members know the song they were singing? Can you just sing, speak the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise you, Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is shadows burn like a fire your name is power your name is power your name is healing your name is love hallelujah hallelujah break every stronghold break every stronghold shine through the shadows God, yes, God, let's stand together and worship. 
God Almighty. Yes, sir. Hey. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is. Your name is. Your name is. Break every stronghold. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name. Your name. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Break every stronghold. Come on now. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like a fire. Hallelujah. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Yes, sir. Shine through the shadows. Shine through the shadows. Mighty God, break every stronghold. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 May I borrow one of these song sheets in just a minute? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. The Holy Spirit is is given to the church so that you and I can be delivered you and I can be set free mighty God oh Jesus mm. your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire Oh, Jesus. Mm. He's healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Let me, let me just make a point quickly. We're going into our communion shortly. But let me make a point. Because when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost was sent to comfort us. To come to aid us. Church is not about going through motions. Holy Ghost knows what people are faced with. People are going through. We smile but we are hurting. We smile but we have pain. Deep pain. Personal pain. Oh God. Jesus of mercy. Oh thank you Jesus. Every All is not well for all of us. And so the Holy Spirit comes to aid us. And it doesn't matter where you are. What stage you are. It doesn't matter what condition you are in. It doesn't matter what your circumstance is the Holy Spirit was sent to help you and sent, sent to help me it doesn't matter how complicated your situation is he was sent to help you it doesn't matter how simple your, yours is he was sent to help you thank you Jesus the enemy the enemy starts in our lives with a pinhole a little situation. A little deed. And we started something that we never intended to continue. Started something that we never intended to become anything that would now 
humbug us with just just a, just a pinhole he starts with. And then the pinhole, the enemy caused the pinhole to become a toe hole. And it continues until it becomes a stronghold. And it moves from a stronghold to a stranglehold. And some of us, we're smiling. But we're gasping for life. Just that others not seeing that part of us. The pain and the hurt and the struggle. The tears. The tears. The tears represent the language of the pain. And the hurt. Some of us have feelings of rejection. Feelings of op oppression. Some of us have not been treated fairly. Faced with all kinds of situation. And God says. Yeah. The Holy Spirit has been sent. To help us. Thank you Jesus. Put your hand. I want you to put your hand. Put your hand on your own chest this afternoon. Lay hands on yourself this afternoon. I don't know what you're faced with. I don't know what you're going through. Everybody have their own situation. Everybody have their own circumstance. Everybody have their own dilemma. Everybody has their own circumstance. But the Holy Spirit has been sent to help all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Father, this afternoon, we thank you for having sent the Holy Spirit to our aid, to help us. We heard your word this afternoon and we surrender ourselves to you. To tell you the truth, we have been trying. We have been trying to get free from the situations we are faced with. The strongholds. Every time we say we're not going back, we go back. Every time we say we want to stop, we continue. Every time we say and we keep saying and not going, but today. Thank you for the helper. Ha ha! Yay, Holy Ghost. Thank you for the helper. Thank you, our helper. Thank you that you have come to help us. Every stronghold in every life, we tear down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every secret stronghold taking place, we command it to end now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, every blackmailing by the enemy. Yay, Spirit of God. We curse it. We cut it off. And we end it today. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God. Lord God, we speak freedom. Over every brother, over every sister, over every individual's life. Freedom of every person, present every person. Oh God who has joined us virtually. Everybody join us by radio. We speak victory over your life. In the name of Jesus, we cut off. We cut off, we cut off every barber. We cut off every mucker. We cut off every prickle. We cut off every stronghold. Every stronghold. Every toehold. We're blocking them up now in the name of Jesus. I speak life over every person. Every individual. I speak peace. You shall sleep tonight. You shall sleep tonight. You shall rest well. Because the comforter has come to help you. 
your helper came today to help you, to release you, to deliver you, to set you free. You shall not continue in that condition anymore. In the name of Jesus. Touch our minds. Liberate us, O oh God. Liberate us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the breakthrough. Thank you for the victory. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My time is gone, but I never like to close a service without giving somebody an opportunity to surrender to Jesus. Two things I want to say quickly. I invite you to Jesus because Jesus tells us that he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. When you surrender your life to Jesus, your life will never be the same. God turns our mess into a message. Mighty God. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. God will allow you to start over. Is there somebody here today who will come forward and say, I want to trust Jesus. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want a brand new start. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Is there somebody who will come get up and come forward and said, yes, I want to start anew with Jesus. Another reason why we invite people to Jesus. Jesus says, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. It doesn't matter how good you feel in sin. You are going down. There is no progress in sin. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Somebody who hates you will not come to you and tell you, I hate you. I brought some poison to kill you. Drink it and die. So Satan is going to dazzle before you all the niceties that he will use to destroy you. Is there one person here today who will say, I heard the voice of Jesus and I want to trust him. Is there somebody online who will say, yes, I heard the voice of Jesus and I want to trust him. Is there somebody listening to us on the radio who will say, yes, I heard the voice of Jesus and I want to trust him. I want to pray. I want to pray and lead you into the sinner's prayer. And the reason I lead people into this prayer, the Bible says, with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mighty God of heaven, Jesus, Jesus. If it's your desire to surrender your life to Jesus, will you pray after me now? Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I know I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Thank you for coming to help me. I know I can't come Except you draw me. I receive you now. As my savior. And my lord. Forgive me of my sins. Oh God. Change my life. I surrender all to you. In Jesus name. Amen.
If you prayed a while ago with me and you meant it with all your heart, you are born again. Thank you, Jesus. And so if you're here, talk to us before you go. If you're online, click the link that the media team will put up. If you're on the radio, if you're far away, just go to a Bible-believing church. Tell them I gave my heart to Jesus and I want to serve him. If you want to make contact with us, then the number that we'll give you at the end of the program, call us. We'll be only too happy to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just...